You know what's really been bothering me since the start of the whole Trump assassination attempt investigation? What were those local law enforcement people up to? Hello, everyone. Dr. Chris Martinson here. We got to talk about this. This really stinks. Wait till you see what I found here. This is, oof. All right, let's just dive right in. First, um, we're just we have to account for the local law enforcement. Not all of them, but a few of them, and we have to ask some questions here. And we're going to uh, count for those statements they've given us so far against Crooks's movements. And we put those two things together. Boy, we got some questions. You see me shifting in my seat uncomfortably around that. First, where were the Overwatch local snipers positioned? They were in Overwatch position, so let's let's make sure we're clear about that. When did they spot and talk about crooks? I think we have a timeline on that. Maybe you know that, but we have to put that into the larger context, which is what we're delivering today. When exactly did they leave their posts, or is the correct word abandon? And then when exactly did that municipal cop see crooks and drop down? Uh, we have to talk about this now. We have an incredible citizens investigation ongoing, and this is a comment by commenter up there who is a user. That's their username they chose. What an excellent string of dots to connect. And oh, by there's so many good things going on back at Peak Prosperity to investigate. So here's here's their string of dots. And I'm just let me um, let me just let's just go through them together. So first commenter said, hey, some suspicious facts concerning the local law enforcement and ESU snipers that I below fit into a narrative where one ESU sniper is the second shooter. Weird facts. So what are those facts? First, three ESU snipers were assigned to the AGR, American Glass Research Building, but one Beaver County sniper leaves at 427, about 90 minutes before Trump gets started speaking. And so what's the point of having somebody before Trump even gets on stage? Second, uh, said BC sniper texts two others that suspect crooks presumably saw him leave building and was just sitting 50 yards away at a picnic table and, quote, he knows you guys are up there. This is the actual text that we see here from July 8th. So they were talking about, let me get my little dot tool out here. Nope, not that. Yeah, that. So here you can see, this is from July 8th. They were talking about Bravo 2 uh, that can stay the whole day so that the Bravo has, has, Bravo unit has two that can stay the whole day, but one that would have to leave early and one. So they were going to have three, but one's going to have to leave early. So this was already noted way in advance here on July 8th. You can see snipers have one da, 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 name and I are going to cover it. Me from eight until four, and then he will cover the rest. Let me know if that works for you. So, so we know now we have three, one's going to be leaving early. Okay. And so here on July 9th, we can see that this is, again, this is, you know, it's the 13th is the event. So now we're, we're days in advance. They're getting warmed up. They're preparing. And they said, here, hey, please hit up your guys up again for Saturday. We are going, and I will make side arrangements with those who are going. Uh, please send me the names. Blank and blank for the whole event, blank from 8 to 4. So we have clearly established one, two, three snipers are coming from the local law enforcement, Beaver and Butler counties. So confirmed, two can work the whole event. One's got to leave eight to four. He can work, um, but uh, the rest the rest of the time. So this is all going to factor in shortly. So on July 12th, day before, at 6.55 in the evening, tweeting back out from the pre-planning document, hey, here's the timeline of events. The sniper positions are going to be occupied starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. Counter assault teams are in place at 11 o'clock. Termination of the Overwatch positions. Overwatch positions start after the motorcade departs. So here's the whole run of show. And so the day before they're confirming, hey, you guys are going to be in what they're calling an Overwatch position. This is important. And it's important because we saw a little bit of trying to frame as if they were just here on this first floor, but they weren't. We know that they were also on the second floor positions. Now, this comes from the Charles Grassley materials. Really good stuff. And by the way, there's a red picnic table right here, which is going to factor in in a minute. And there's also potentially a picnic table over here, which will also factor in in a minute. So in yellow, here we have Beaver ESU, and we saw a picture of that funny thing draped. Is that a gun? Is it a gun without a barrel? Is it a shorty with a suppressor? We don't know, but there's that funny gun looking out here. 
at these trees. And you see people under the trees, and we can tell they're on the second floor because if you look straight out that window, you'd see trees, and below you would be people consistent oops, sorry, with being on the second floor. And as well, this we have open windows all along this side here. And so here we have marked that here's where these people were going to be. And so on the first floor, I think, would be this blue dot down here. And you see they don't really have a lot of, they have a very tight cone of what they can see down there because they're on the lower floor looking out a little window. Uh, not really an overwatch position, but Beaver in yellow, Butler in green. Beaver and Butler are up here and responsible for that second floor overwatch position, which, of course, would have been just snap, easy peasy to see crooks right here. So... This is where things get a little funky, right? Okay, so at 427, this is T minus 105 minutes. It's an hour and 45 minutes before the first shot is fired. So an hour and 105 minutes, hour 45, we get this. This is uh, that one sniper who's leaving. They don't leave at 4. Instead, it looks like they're leaving at 426. They said they're texting. They're on their way out. They must be in the parking lot because they said, quote, someone followed our lead and snuck in and parked by our cars, just so you know. So they're in a parking lot. There are only two parking lots on that AGR complex. One in the front with that false front where the ladders are and everybody's there. That's one parking lot. And then there's another one out back. So we don't know which one we're talking about, but I think we can guess based on this next text part, which says, quote, I'm just letting you know because you see me go out with my rifle and put it in my car. So he knows you guys are up there. He's sitting to the direct right on a picnic table about 50 yards from the exit. We don't know who he's talking about here necessarily, but it seems like he's talking about this crooks guy who's already been on the radar screen and, quote, he knows you guys are up there. Now, that means he must have observed him for a little bit, must have seen him looking up, crooks looking up from the table up towards uh, their overwatch position. And then we get two responses, one from somebody where they've, they've blanked all this out and everything, but... I think we can see here an N and an M. That's what those two look like. And I'm going to guess that that helps us identify these as separate, separate two responses. A thumbs up and a roger that. I'm not sure what those N and M's are, but I'm just guessing somehow this is indicating uh, that we have two separate people. Maybe. Carrying on, he carries on and says, the, that bike was not there when I pulled out. Maybe have them check that car, and I don't know what the rest says. So some confusion in the Grassley materials, they put this picture up and they said, hey, red picnic table circled here. And here is purple point of ESU entry and exit. So this is where ESU is going to come and go inside and out of what's called building six crooks, of course, shot for, or crooks was found dead on the roof up here. We're still trying to resolve who did what shooting. And so let me be careful about that, because here's some things we still don't yet know. We don't know that the gun that Crooks had fired any rounds. We don't know that it was chambered in 223. We don't know that the brass that was picked up around that gun matched to that particular gun and firing pin. We don't know that Crooks' hands had gunshot residue on them. We don't know anything. We just don't. We haven't been told. We're, we're guessing. We're assuming. We've been told it was Crooks on the roof with a rifle, like it's a game of Clue, but we actually have no confirming evidence around that. And the more time that passes, the more we're going to, be guessing and suspecting and worrying that that evidence has been tampered with or is not believable, unfortunately, um, because of how things have gone in the past. Now, this is from the after action report, again, from the Grassley materials. So Beaver County, they put out a, an after action report and they said, hey, at 6.05, 18.05 hours, at 6.05. So this is just, um, what is that, seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes before the shooting starts, okay? Six minutes. Six and a half minutes. Somewhere in there. Because uh, I don't know exactly what this means, 1805 and how many seconds. But five minutes after six, they're saying this is the status that they knew about. They all sat down in a room. They compared notes. They looked at text. They remembered what happened. And they drew this, uh, took this picture and said, hey, listen, at 605, our understanding was there was a bicycle and a backpack here. The suspect was noted at a picnic table, which they put back here. Okay. And that's not where the one in the Grassley photo, the Grassley photo one would have been here. Okay. And then they said, hey, there's a Beaver County East EC ESU sniper here in this position over that. And there's a Butler County sniper here. So at 
605, they're saying both snipers that are left are still in their positions. One on that west south corner window in the blue square, one a little bit further to the east, um, looking out of that overwatch position window indicated by the green right side up triangle. One, of course, being the position where Crooks was found right there. And um, so I guess we label all these buildings. They're labeling them one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And they said, of course, at 805, sorry, 605, at 1805, direction of travel is suspect last noted this way back here. Now, I want you to note this corner right here very carefully because it's going to figure in pretty prominently um, in just a second. First up, this is from that video we just showed yesterday, which is much higher resolution. And this is around this corner. This See this little retaining wall right here on this building? That would have been this retaining wall that, that's seen right off of this corner. So if there is a picnic table back here, I'm not sure we can locate it here from this video that was taken. This video is just seconds before the shooting's about to take place. Now, from Google Street View, we go to the back side of this whole thing and we can find a picnic table and obviously they're portable and mobile and all of that. So maybe this picnic table got carted off and is now back here. And this is the last place they saw crooks, but that's kind of weird because they, they had them right here. And naturally, obviously, this is a real easy way to get on the roof. And as well, there's another easy way to get on the roof right over there. That would be odd to say, look, we've been tracking this guy. We're worried about him. And at 6.05, the last place we saw him, the last place we saw him was at a picnic table right by a super easy on-ramp to the roof or another on-ramp to the roof here. And the last known direction of travel of suspect is putting him back here, which, of course, I actually think this is a very likely AC unit for him to have climbed up on if that was the route. Um, yeah, just a just an odd thing there. So kind of interesting, right? So remember that at, at 426 or 428, whenever that was, uh, the leaving, the, the, the exiting one of three snipers, ding, said, hey, he's at a picnic table about 50 yards from the entrance. Which entrance? So if we said this is the last known picnic table, uh, 50 yards, 150 feet, I don't know which entrance they could be talking about. Is There's no entrance on this. Maybe, well, there is a door on this side of the building. I know there's doors here and here. I know there's a door here. Obviously, you can see the walkway coming into that. You can see the walkway coming in towards this one. And there's also entrances over here. So, But when that first sniper leaving said he's 50 yards from the entrance, doesn't really fit. But he said he's at a picnic table. And here they're saying, last seen at this picnic table, but was he noted at this picnic table at 6.05, or is this earlier? A lot of confusion here. We have questions. Um, but if we said, hey, you know, here he is sitting about 50 yards from the exit, and this is the main exit everybody was using, 50 yards, pretty good guesstimate, because that's where the table is that we first saw in the Grassley photo. So I'm going to guess, based on this, that this guy is saying, hey, the picnic table that we saw him at that's 50 yards from the exit was the one as indicated in the Grassley materials where you can see it's that one off by the exit, which is right here. So that's fine. Okay. I still don't know what this one means then. Suspect noted at a different picnic table. So now we have to bring two picnic tables in if we're going to bring this picnic table into play. Things are just getting a little weird. So what I don't like is when there's lots of inconsistencies in stories. And as you're going to see, they're really going to mount pretty badly as we as we carry on here. All right. <clears throat> and then here we have a spelling error, kid learning around building. We're, we're interpreting that as kid lurking around building. We are in, that's at 538, is when they sent the picture. The picture was actually taken earlier. Kid lurking around building we are in. AGR, I believe it is. Oh, uh, Yeah. I did see him with a rangefinder looking towards stage. Hmm, FYI, if you want to notify uh, Secret Service snipers to look out, I lost sight of him. Also, a bike with a backpack sitting next to it in rear of building that was not seen earlier. That's been ruled out. I'm pretty sure they found the guy whose bike that actually was. That had nothing to do with Crooks. He, I think, drove there. A little confusing. Did he drive there in his car, which is a Nissan or a white van? Something was rigged with explosives. A lot of confusion around the vehicle as well. However, I don't think the, the bicycle, I think the bicycle's a red herring in this instance. Has nothing to do with anything. But they said, call it into command and have uniform. Check it out. 
Um, and then here we see uh, if you want to send this to whoever at command, if you have cell number from N, we can see the N there. This is the bike picture. Again, didn't have anything to do with anything. S said, okay, sent. P says they're asking for a direction of travel. N coming back into the fold here saying, not sure. He was up against the building. If I had to guess toward the back, away from the event. So heading away from the event. Now, all of this is happening here at 545, 551, 559, 6 p.m. Okay. By the way, um, my scouting report for today for my subscribers, if you're watching this and uh, just you're a subscriber, please come back to Peak Prosperity. We got to back up and see the big picture, everything that's going on. Uh, I have a really, really big piece of framing that uh, I'm lifting from a webinar we put on a while ago, but it's really important that we share this point of view again about why all of this stuff is happening. I don't want to get lost in the in the trees. We got to back up, see the forest. So that framing is something, as you know, I'm particularly good at. So I want everybody to understand that, that it's time we have to back up. Otherwise, we'll get lost in this story. Now, back to the bullet points. So a uh, commenter was saying at 6.05 to 6.12, coincidentally, just before Trump was shot, one of the two ESU snipers left the AGR building, supposedly abandons his post and responsibility while Trump is speaking. Now, this is actual weirdness. This isn't fake weirdness. This is actually weird. And then carrying on, the motive alleged by ESU for the crucial abandonment was that the ESU was supposedly wanted to Look for crooks on the grounds, even though he could have just radioed local LEOs to do so, maybe get a uniform. Plus, there were 12 plus local LEOs in that area just after the shooting, plus three undercover or plainclothes, we should say, officers from the west side of the AGR. Wow, we've got some more on that super explosive stuff. Wait till you see this in just a few minutes. But this is what I was noticing, too. Same thing as commenter, which is like, why would you have to leave your post to go look for this kid first? generously there were a hundred people out over there generously you could scan them in a second or two and say not 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 a kid not a kid in a gray shirt with glasses not a kid at all right it, very easy and there weren't that many people around so how is it possible that that the sniper said you know i'm just gonna have to go look for this person myself i'm leaving my post it just doesn't make sense it's just, it's an odd thing actual weirdness next quote besides why unnecessarily abandon his responsibility only late like it's 605 to 612 and not way before right esu took a pick of crooks at 514 already at 526 they're like he's on their radar like hey weird kid he's he's hanging out at the picnic table he sees you right uh so then why wouldn't you leave back then uh, and then texted at 538 to snipers about the suspect. So if it was so urgent to personally look for the suspect, why not have done so 50 minutes earlier before Trump got on the stage? Well, you know, you're sitting there, you're like, that's a little weird. And it builds in you. And then finally, you're like, that's a lot weird. And then finally, you get that panic. Like, oh, no, I think I left the stove on at home. You know, you're halfway across the Atlantic in a plane. You're like, you know, you get that. I can see that happening. But it doesn't make sense to say, hey, I got to leave my post, right? There's so many law enforcement down there. There's like a dozen more, but minimally, there were a dozen law enforcement down there uh, who you could have just like, I don't know, used your radios. Because as far as I know, these guys all had radios and they were in radio communication with each other. They can say, oh, yeah, it was a little tricky getting our radios to the Secret Service people. We didn't want to just yell uh, to them. But these, there's no excuse here that their, their radios weren't interoperable here at this environment. So just call it on down or just lean out the window because there's authors, officers down there just yelled out the way, hey, can you go take a look for that kid? You know, just lean out the window, you know, wave a white flag. Don't abandon your post. I don't get it. Uh, carrying on. The other remaining ESU sniper also alleges a need to leave to allow colleagues back in the AGR building I don't know how to make sense of that yet. And then shots four to eight, we think were taken from a different location than shots one to three. This is an ongoing area of investigation. So this is really a, a very odd tale. Um, let's start here first. So we know from an article in the Daily Beast on July 23rd, uh, because they are recounting the verbal testimony of Paris, who is the state police or Pennsylvania spokesperson who was there in front of Congress 
says here, uh, officers dipped from post to search for Trump gunmen at rally. Top cop says, quote, the suspicions of the ESU officers in the area who had a text thread going, according to Paris, again, that's the spokesperson for the state police of Pennsylvania, was heightened after Crooks was spotted looking through a rangefinder, a tool used by hunters to judge long distance shots. And at that point, they sent a call and a text to state police who verbally turned right around and gave it to the Secret Service. The commissioner added, okay, verbally turned right around. So text comes in, Secret Service person goes, I mean, sorry, state police person in the command post receives it and turns around and says to the Secret Service person, hey, dude, we got an issue here, okay? So we know verbally turned right around and gave it to the Secret Service. That means that I didn't, that verbally was not retexted. It wasn't sent electronically. Um, turned right around, gave it to Secret Service. So we know Secret Service got it, okay? Another odd point in this whole story. Right now, I'm just looking at the oddities of local law enforcement, but trust me, there's an equal story of oddness around what the Secret Service did not do in multiple instances, and this would be one of them. The warning was relayed roughly 20 to 25 minutes before the shooting, according to Paris. A photo of crooks taken by the local snipers was also sent up the chain of command. After flagging him, the two ESU officers abandoned their post to go search for the would-be assassin on the ground alongside other local officers in the immediacy, Paris said. He was unable to provide an exact timeline of their movements. And Benny Johnson had, had also, a while back, had put this up, which we reported on before, said they had a scoop, right? The real reason Trump's assassin was not eliminated on the rooftop before firing on Trump was... And they said this information comes from a first-hand source, highest credentials. Quote, there was a three-man SWAT sniper team located in this position. One member of the team went home early, which we've established. Not sure how this was allowed, but it happened. Well, it was, it was pre-agreed, according to the text. Uh, the remaining two snipers positioned in this room were notified that a suspicious individual was lurking outside the building. Okay, I take exception with that. It's not they were notified. They were the ones notifying about this suspicious individual. Because remember, they took the pictures from the second floor window of crooks down on the retaining wall. They were the ones sending these pictures out, okay? One team member left his position to investigate, leaving just one sniper with overwatch of the roof. Well, now that one has a very important job, uh, I guess. The investigating team member found nothing and in the process of returning to his position, realized he'd forgotten his access card into the building. The last remaining sniper with Overwatch left the position to retrieve his team member locked outside. Now, this is weird because, again, we've established that we all know that there's this big giant entrance over there, the entrance and exit in the grassy materials. It's got a purple set of lines around it, right? This is the place. And somehow they couldn't get back in, right? So this very odd tale, like, like there, there's your way back in. There it is, right, right there. I don't understand uh, this story at all. So now we have to believe that maybe there were other entrances on the other part of the building. And so the other person said, oh, I got to go let this person in. So now they have to run from the second floor down to the first floor and maybe open one of those back doors that opens to the back parking lot. OK, how long do you think it takes to go? Oh, shoot, I'm the last person up here and I got a lot of gear up here. So I got to go let this guy back in because he's just texted me and I'd like to see the text or the phone call that says, hey, I'm locked out. Can you let me back in? You know, rookie mistakes, right? I goofed. You run down the set of stairs, you push the door open, you run back up. What are you thinking? 20, 30 seconds? Well, kind of interesting. So according to the after action report from uh, Beaver County here, they said it again at 6.05 in the evening, approximately suspect at picnic tables in moving direction of sheets. He has a backpack. And uh, as communicated by do, do, do by radio, love to know who that is. Who saw him at that moment? Quote, Butler sniper stayed in place at original position. So I'm not sure it, that should say snipers. But anyway, that's what they wrote. Butler sniper stayed in place. But then it, at 606 to 612. Goes downstairs of building one to meet patrol and let them know suspect is around building on sides of fairgrounds. 
And at the same time, somewhere in the zone, one marked vehicle and an unmarked vehicle pull in together. Wait, 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 wait. So, so at 8.06 to 8.12, the official story off of their after action report in Beaver County is for those six minutes, this person here, who <clears throat> their name might, might rhyme with Bregg, uh, goes downstairs at building one. And remember, they, they, building one is the one that Crooks is on. Goes downstairs of building one to meet patrol, let them know suspects around the building on the side of the fairgrounds. How does that take six minutes? And l- let, let's put this into real, um, we have to get this this timeline once you put it this way. I, I was like, uh, this, this just, this smells bad. This is stinky, folks. This is extra stinky. So from Ron Johnson, we have this timeline, Ron Johnson, the senator, we see here that um, at 6.03, right, at 5.53, hey, you know, um, we got all this stuff going on. You know, the, the earlier timeline, it's like they're, they're worried about this kid because he's he's set off some alarm bells, right? So Crooks has set off alarm bells. But again, there's only like 100 people, and I'm being generous. It's probably closer to 70 are on that side of the fence on the north side up on the AGR buildings. And you got a dozen people, a dozen officers out there. At 6.03, former President Trump takes the stage. So clock running, 6.03. At 6.06, we, according to FBI Director, Deputy Director Paul Abate, video shows Crooks pulling himself onto the AGR building rooftop. I have not seen this video. I don't know if you have, but Crooks pulling himself onto the rooftop. I have not seen this. I've seen this one at 6.08, a video taken by James Copenhaver, who would later sustain a gunshot wound at the rally, appears to show Crooks moving across the roof of the AGR building. So there's two minutes. He's pulled himself up, and then we got two more minutes, and then at 6.08, we see him way over there, right? At 6.08.20, a local law enforcement officer reports over the radio, there is someone on the roof of the AGR building. Look at that. So now we have local law enforcement at 6.08 saying, hey, we got somebody on the roof. Um, and they said at 6.08.32, 12 seconds later, that they're wearing white shorts. So we have a lot like, dudes, we got somebody on the roof. So this is the timeline we're supposed to accept. Local sniper teams have been planning for weeks. They take positions at 11 o'clock in the morning. They're tracking weirdness about crooks for at least 105 minutes. It's an hour and 45 minutes. 603, it's showtime. Trump finally takes the stage. This is everything you've been planning for, all the thing. This should be the heightened moment of alert. And at 605, two minutes after Trump takes the stage, roughly, one of the remaining two Overwatch snipers leaves the post to look for crooks. And then at 606, the last sniper leaves the Overwatch post. (laughs) They left the windows open. They possibly was still sniper gear set up. We have questions about that ostensibly to let the other sniper back in, we're told, but we now don't know the name of the other sniper. We don't know if they were let back in. We're missing six whole minutes here because, you know, at uh, 6.08, we have crooks captured on video by James Copenhaver. We have radio reports that there's somebody on the roof. And at 6.11.33, the first shots are fired. How is this happening back here at 6.05, 6.06? We lose both snipers from that room. And somehow, with all this chatter and, oh, no, at, you know, 6.08, Look at this. Look at this right here. 60820. We have a local law enforcement on the radio who ostensibly um, we, that that it's 608 at 606 blank who rhymes with probably rhymes with Bregg goes downstairs to meet with patrol. Let them know suspect is around the building. That's it. 606. Yeah. Well, at at 608. 22 two minutes later, there's like chat, like, yeah, there's a kid up on the roof. Oh, no, sparks are connecting. Now we understand in our brains that we're down there in building one, like, hmm, I told him to look for this kid. Now we got reports of somebody on the roof. I wonder what we should make of this situation. Hmm, I know. I'm going to stand down here for another six minutes. Or or at least four minutes. I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to be down here for three, four, five more minutes, whatever, whatever the timeline is. This is why we need an absolutely aggressive actual actual timeline. But at 6.06, they leave the post. At 6.08.38, we see crooks by James Copenhaver. At 6.08.20, local local radios or police radios are already lit up saying somebody's on the roof. And at 6.11.33, the first shot is fired. 
Okay, remember Milk Bar TV did this extraordinary thing. I put this in yesterday's piece or the day before. I can't remember now. It's all blurring. But it's 60838. That's how we know. We have crooks right there on the roof, right? Um, and remember we had some questions. We we're like, hey, where did all these plain clothes officers show up? Here's somebody who rhymes with Greg uh, standing right there. Pretty sure that is Greg Nickel. Here we have Capri Pants Guy. Here we have ZZ Top. And here we have Camo Shorts Guy, okay? So we were like, hey, we had questions like, where did these guys come from? We know they came from the west side of the building, the side that all the people were on going, look, there's a guy on the roof. So we had some questions about that. Um, and remember, you know, here at 609.42, yeah, we got people out here saying, yeah, hey, someone's, someone's on top of the roof, right? That's a quote pulled from this beautiful thing that Milk Bar TV did to line up all these video clips so now we can get the whole story together, right? And... At uh, 610.07, a man says, officer. So somebody's already being flagged over, right? It's at 610, like, hey, officer. And then a woman yells at 610 in 13 seconds. He's on the roof right there on the, on the roof. And then at 611.27, a man yells, he's got a gun. And then just six seconds later, shots ring out. Now, awesome stuff in the Citizens Investigation, NWK Photography finds those plain clothes leos i miss them they said hey here they are and this is off of that new improved video we just showed where we got finally the upgraded uh video from that west side all important video and here they are it says look guys here they are found them so i zoomed in on that piece sure enough we got capri pants guy we got camo cargo shorts guy there they are there they are at just about 11 seconds before the shots are going to ring out they're over there on this side where all these people for minutes have been saying there's a guy on the roof and what about this hey again for the win nwk photography found zz top guy yep sure enough there he is in that same video and this is at 16 seconds before the shots ring out there he is just strolling around out there in the audience where there are people actively saying there's a guy on the roof right which you would think would attract some attention in that role and of course, if you look here carefully, this is the retaining wall that Crooks was snapped. The picture was snapped on by one of the ESU snipers. And of course, they were up here or should have been. And he, along this wall is where all the windows are open. But what do you think would happen if an officer just jumped up on this retaining wall and went, oh, yeah, hey, hey, yeah, there's totally there's there's a dude. Now, listen, hindsight's twenty twenty. I get it. But they had three full minutes of where is this guy right and we at, during this time we saw people on the other side because of the dave stewart film that there's cops on that side look like stadies and munis they have guns drawn they are so alarmed at this point in time they are walking around like and everybody's already not watching trump but they're all swiveled and focused on this building and we have plain clothes officers over here and somehow greg and the other sniper have as yet unnamed, have left their positions and nobody can figure out how to see this guy. He's like, right, they, like ground level. You can just see him because, of course, this building is set down in this little uh, depression here. It's been it's set a lot lower and you have a retaining wall right there. Like you could just you could just jump and you could just see you could just see. OK. All right. Now um, and then uh, this is interesting. Uh, again, this is from the comments from Commenter back at the site, part of the Citizen Investigation. Thank you, everybody participating. It's amazing. We're, we're unraveling this. Mainstream media immediately plants a story about a local cop being boosted to the roof of the AGR and falling down. Uh, name of the cop is never released. No witnesses of any kind. And then there's this Greg Smith guy who says differently. So let's turn to that now. So let me pull up my audio on this other one because this actually gets a little weird um so let me do that second remember so we had this story came out right and this is from a cbs story and it says here quote butler county sheriff michael sloop confirmed to kdka tv that an armed municipal officer armed with butler township encountered shooter thomas crooks before he fired shots from a rooftop building outside the perimeter of former president trump's rally the sheriff said he was not made aware of any potential threats, 
but confirmed an officer encountered the shooter on the roof and didn't fire his weapon. All I know, he said here, is the officer had both hands up on the roof to get up on the roof, never made it because the shooter had turned toward the officer. And rightfully and smartly, the officer let go. Um, Sheriff Sloop says that before the shooting, the officer and others were previously alerted to a suspicious person and began searching for him right away. Sheriff Sloop said this officer was hoisted by another officer to the roof of a building where the shooter had taken a position. So somehow they got hoisted up on that, on uh, Building 6 as we know it, and somehow got hoisted up, and then the story is is that um, Crooks turned and, and was getting, pointed his gun at him. Now, this is interesting. So this is from a report that came out very, very early. And so this is with a town manager from a local reporter. Let's listen to how the whole thing was being described back then. Or he actually opened fire on the former president that they were hanging. One of the officers was hanging off of the rooftop, locked eyes with him and had an AR-15 pointed at his head before he dropped to the ground. L listen to the way that this town manager describes the situation to me. When he was able to pull his head up over the roof, um, he did, in fact, see an individual on the roof with a weapon. He saw the shooter? He did. And what did the shooter do? Turned towards him, um, had the barrel of his weapon pointed at the officer. He pointed his rifle at the officer? Yes. And at that point, the officer's hanging on yes. to the side of the roof? Yes. Unable to pull a gun out. Unable to... Unable, unable to defend to, himself. Una unable to reach his radio. Any of that. Yeah, yeah. Strictly defensive movement for him to lower his head, duck, um, lost his own grip, right? Fell approximately eight feet to the ground. So here's what the township manager told hmm. me. He said that... the That's weird. So obviously the first thing you do if you're dropped like that is... Um, you immediately radio, so I'd like to hear that radio chatter. Uh, as well, you pull your gun out and you climb back up and you, you, you shoot over the top or you have, you're have hoisted back up or you fire a couple into the ground, get the party started, but that didn't happen. And then listen to this. This is a whole lot of backing up happening here. I don't know what's going on anymore. Sheriff, the Washington Post is reporting, according to you, that seconds before the gunman opened fire, he came face to face with a municipal police officer who was not equipped to neutralize him. What can you tell me about that? Well, I never said that. And I appreciate you, Jennifer, for bringing that to my attention. I immediately called the uh, Washington Post reporter to straighten that particular issue out. Um, you know, how would I know it was seconds, first of all? And I never said that to begin with. Uh, the face-to-face -face thing, how could I know he was face-to-face? -face? All I know is the officer had both hands up on the roof to get up onto the roof, never made it because the shooter had turned towards the officer and rightfully and smartfully, the officer let go. When stories start to shift around a whole lot, this, this, is, this is where this is, something's off, right? I mean, this is just classic police work, right? You don't have to be a super you know, crime scene detective. It's like when the story isn't consistent, that's where you lean in a little bit. So there's something off in this story, and I don't know what it is, but I'm really concerned that we don't know the name of this municipal officer or the other one who was boosting them up or whether they were boosted up at all or how, if they were actually confronted with a rifle, if they were, how much time elapsed between that confrontation and then uh, the actual shooting. Because, because we have actual video from the times that Crook came down and we see him rotate away and he's probably reassembling his rifle from his backpack, which was probably put into two pieces. There's a couple of snap pins that you can reassemble the rifle and then he rolls back over and he crawls up and we see, we have full view of him that whole time and he doesn't turn because to, to confront somebody, it can't have been somebody from the west side of the building because we have cameras on that side. So it has to be from the par the other side, the main entrance side, the parking lot side where that, that ladder is up against the wall against uh, in behind those uh, those trees in that cubby or something. He, so imagine this. Crook is on the roof. He's facing this way. The threat from this officer who he has to confront is over here, this direction. So your choices include, this is on a ribbed roof. Your choices include you have to hike up 
and come over like this and point, or you have to roll all the way over for righty makes more sense where you come all the way over and twist over and then point. Like, how did that happen? Like, we should have seen, like, like that would have been a fairly aggressive large body motion by Crooks to point that gun unless he pointed it right when he had his back turned to us and we didn't see that. But then we have to account for the fact that three, two and a half minutes pass from that moment until the first shot. And now we have to ask, well, what was that municipal officer doing for those getting some coffee, not alerting anybody like this people, this story stinks to high heaven. It just does. This is where the investigation needs to look and look very carefully because it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. Now, remember, eyewitness, key, a key eyewitness, Greg Smith, told Gateway Pundit a while back, he said, I saw him, the sniper, Crooks, right before the shots happened, and I didn't see him turn around and confront anyone. Never saw that. Didn't happen. We asked all the people around us in our group. We didn't see that. I heard the story about the officer falling and hurting his foot, but no one saw that. I've heard the stories, but I have no idea what they're talking about. So how do we begin to account for this? Because somehow it's an important part of the story element that we have to have this confrontation by a muni officer, but we don't have the officer's name. We don't have any sense of exactly where they pulled themselves up or who was boosting them or how much time elapsed or any of that. And we don't have any confirmation from the video that we have of, of Crooks doing his bat crawling up there. We don't have any, we don't have any confirmation of it. So why the story? What are our options? The story's complete BS, right? Just somebody made it up and now we're just parsing through some fat tale or somebody wanted to sound more heroic than they actually were. Um, some uni cop actually tripped over like a curb and hurt their ankle and then made up this fantastic story about what we just hear. Um, or um, somehow there's something going on where an officer has to account for why they have a hurt foot in the context of the shooting. So we could come up with some theories around that. None of them good. Um, and or this is just a, a cover story being put out to throw everybody off and it, it's it's complete BS from higher up. Uh, I don't know what's happening at this point, but if I was in charge of the investigation, um, congressmen and senators, I'd be burrowing in hard on this little piece right here. Now, um, remember, so it was CBS News on July 17th, uh, still was reporting that there was two officers involved. And so they said here, officials lost track of crooks who disappeared, but soon returned for a third time, a third time with a backpack. The local sniper team called for backup. Alerting command post, gunman had a backpack walking toward the back of the building. By the time the other local law officers responded to the backup request, the gunman had scaled the building. Da, da, da. Two other municipal officers who heard the call for backup attempted to climb onto the roof. Butler County Sheriff Michael Sloop told CBS Pittsburgh station KDKA that an armed municipal officer with Butler Township was hoisted by another officer onto the roof of the building where the gunman had taken position. Crooks focused his rifle towards the officer who ultimately let go, falling off the roof. Moments later, the shooter began firing into the crowd. Well, towards Trump. I'm not even sure I would call it firing into the crowd. Uh, all very odd, obviously. Um, and so this leads to a whole lot of actual weirdness around this whole thing. Um, and so the last bullet point here from Commenter says, right after the shooting in the Dave Stewart film, a massive group of LEOs was law enforcement officers was on the eastern side of AGR six, very tensely pointing guns and rifles at the roof, not knowing even if there was another shooter alive. Yet the three undercover officers, plus Greg Nickel and camo pants, plus a Nike shirt, were nearby, relaxed, chatting, guns put back. Um, just yeah, just like that part always confused me. Something really odd about that whole thing. So when we look at this timeline, I'm just having a really hard time buying it uh, that just the just listen, your whole job as a sniper is to not abandon your post. Your whole job, if you have two of you, is both of you are not supposed to abandon your post. But we're supposed to believe that both of them just suddenly decided at 606, 605 and 606 to just abandon their post. Trump had just come on stage just at 603. A couple minutes later, they're like, my work here is done. There's a weird, there's a very suspicious person. I know, let's leave our all-important Overwatch positions because 
Obviously, we're going to do more good down on the ground with the other dozen law enforcement officers where nobody has a vantage point. Let's all run around on the ground. That's the best use. I mean, it's just, come on, people. This stinks to high heaven, obviously. There's something wrong with this. There's something wrong with the Muni cop story. There's something wrong with the timeline and all of this. Obviously, we need answers. And so this is where I would focus the investigation if I had the human resources and was able to come in and really start picking stories apart because something's really not good in these stories. So with that, thanks very much for listening today. I'm going to be heading back over to Peak Prosperity. We got to go through the big picture on this because I think I can snap this into focus for folks what's going on here. Let's not get lost in the forest for the trees. Let's see the forest because, boy, big things happening right now. With that, thanks everybody else for listening. Hope you got something from this. Please continue to contribute to the Citizens Investigation Pictures videos, thoughts, ideas, calculations, anything you got, we'll make it use. We'll make use of it. All right. Bye for now.